Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of light and secret knowledge wherever you may be, you are listening to Points of Light Radio, the podcast dedicated to taking you past the apron and behind the closed doors of lodges everywhere. And here is your host, Stan Miller. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Adnastana. It's a pleasure to be back with you here on Points of Light Radio. It's been an interesting journey, hasn't it? It really has. Uh, right As we're getting closer towards the end of this year, uh, it's we, we've really covered a lot of ground, right? And in today's segment of Points of Light Radio, uh, we'll be covering some, some historical ground, hopefully. Uh, I'll be bringing you the third and final segment in a series of uh, interviews I did with our new friend Tommy Schroeder. You may recall him from previous segments of Points of Light Radio where he discussed the KOP and the Grotto and so on. Uh, in today's segment of Points of Light Radio, he's here to uh, discuss uh, Freemasonry, uh, his lodge, and hopefully some other things, because apparently from a previous segment of Points of Light Radio, he talked about uh, having visited George Washington's old lodge in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So I want to talk to him about that. But uh, Mr. Schroeder is the senior steward in the Stafford Lodge 279 in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So like I said, I want to see what he has to say about, he, he told me he visited uh, George Washington's old lodge. So we got to talk about that too. But without uh, further ado, let's go talk to Mr. Schroeder. But as I always ask you, are you still thirsty for knowledge? Are you still seeking the light? And just trim your lamp and follow me. <sighs> Mr. Schroeder, welcome back and thank you for uh, your last two interviews. And I'm really looking forward to this one because you're going to talk about Freemasonry. Now, uh, you are a member of a, a, a Master Mason. Actually, I'm a member of Stafford Lodge 279. The Fredericksburg one is the uh, next closest one, but yes, I am a Master Mason. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, so, but you have been in that lodge, have you not? I have been in that lodge before, yes. Okay, yeah. So, tell us about your lodge, first of all. Okay, my lodge is uh, definitely not as big or as impressive as Fredericksburg Lodge, or uh, 279 is a bit out of the way. It's definitely not as old. It only goes back to the 1970s, but I love it. It's close by. It's good camaraderie and brotherhood. Um, we all laugh and get along. Mm-hmm. Now, how many members does it have? My lodge? Um, not as much as some in the Fredericksburg one, I can tell you that. No. Um, probably less that goes to meetings. Um, my lodge is really not that big. Um, my lodge building is actually, believe it or not, my our chaplain lives right behind it, and so we always joke, Hey, meat was bad because no, it's on this. Li the building isn't a trust, so uh, when he, you know, unfortunately goes to heaven, mm. for better or worse, the lodge will stay with us. But the building is on lanes that is in the chaplain's family. Okay. Now, if you, now, Fredericksburg Lodge. Um, if you want to talk about that, I can tell you a lot about that as well. Well, how long? Well, how, first of all, how long? Have you been a Freemason? Like, oh, uh, probably I had my uh, one year Masonic birthday in uh, Jan January or February. Uh, I guess I'm probably like a year and more than a half, I guess. Okay, now you, yeah, we I did want to talk to you about that Fredericksburg Masonic Lodge. Uh, 
like, first of all, you know, what does it feel like going into that building? I just, I, you know, there, there's still active meetings there, right? They have probably have a little display to him and things like that. Right. So um, the building itself, like the actual building, it, uh, believe it or not, the French Imperial Lodge number four was actually, you know, the Lodge George Washington was entered as an apprentice got initiated and was passed. I don't think uh, he got raised to become a master mason there. Oh no! Oh, okay. But, but um, where was he raised to a master mason then? I don't know. I was told that he that he, he was certainly a member there, though. He I was told he was entered and passed. I think in those days, uh, because you know everyone lived so far apart and stuff, and he had to travel a lot. Um, they weren't necessarily raised in the same lodge, you know, they were initiated in. They could have been, but they, um, wasn't always the case. Now, and the building itself was, um, the original lodge, where, you know, the, the people, the group has been raised and they have a charter dating back to, uh, Scotland. They're chartered both under the Grand Lodge of Scotland and the Grand Lodge of Virginia because the lodge itself is actually older than the country of America in the Grand Lodge of Virginia. But, um, the building itself actually only dates back to the Civil War. Now, there are artifacts, and, you know, there's a Grand Lodge and Charter in the old lodge room upstairs, and there are artifacts and stuff to corroborate, and, you know, they have records going back to George Washington to prove that. But the but, building um, has changed since he was there. Right. The original lodge where George Washington met no one really knows where the original lodge met. Oh. Probably in the tavern somewhere. Yeah, it was I'll definitely look. in the area, though. It was in the area of Fredericksburg. We just don't know where, you know, it met when George Washington was around. The building got moved sometime around the Civil War. But there are a lot of, you know, artifacts and stuff. Go, go back to, you know, colonial times and stuff. And it, there are a number of appended bodies that... uh meet at that lodge too in fact you know in my last interview i told you i'm a member of a, a pin the body vagrado that meets there okay yeah but i i do know he was quite proud of his uh masonic uh membership because he did bring the the freemason bible to his inauguration there are pictures of him standing yep. there in his apron, like paintings of him standing there in his apron. He really, he, was, he did nothing to hide it, put it that way. Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I believe uh, he actually encouraged a lot of his soldiers to join because, as he believed, you know, At and least I want to officers. say he rightfully believed it built up a sense of camaraderie and brotherhood, as if the military, you know, didn't do that enough. <laughs> and what do you, what do you think would have been some of the crucial changes in Freemasonry uh, since those days that he was a member? Since those days? Well, um, they definitely drank a lot more back then. Like, I told you about uh, in the last segment or a couple segments ago, um, at least in Virginia, we don't really have bars in our lodges anymore mm -hmm. due to the whole prohibition thing. So I think that's a big change. Mm -hmm. Um. I guess, you know, I don't think much has changed in terms of ritual. But I think the, I like think, all, I but, think um, you'll agree, the, the lodges were probably used a lot more, uh, I've often said this, you know, they were places of fellowship as well as, shall we say, entertainment. I mean, they were places where you would go you know, have a dance, shall we say, on a Saturday night, you know, and things well, like that. They were definitely... Yeah, I guess you could see that. And, you know, I'd like to think in a lot of places they still probably could be that way, I guess, mm -hmm. maybe. And your membership, I think you'll agree with me, probably meant more because, as I've, I've discussed here on Points of Light Radio as well, you know... People didn't. It we didn't live in a connected world. There was no way to really research somebody. Well, exactly. So if you were right. working even two towns over from yourself to be able to go there, and if you were a member, people say, "Okay, I can trust this guy because he's we know." Right. So that's never. 
So you're right. That's actually another thing that I've changed slightly is um, dues membership. Like when I became a Mason, they gave me a password to a website where, you know, I, they gave me a physical dues card as well. But like I could, you know, in an emergency, and I never lost my Masonic dues card, I could go to this website, uh, Greenview, and just log in and, you know, show them. And then, you know, if no one rounds the voucher for me, they could go, oh, yeah, he's a Mason. Back in those days, they didn't really have a website. For dues cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, what drew you to Freemasonry? Um, I've always, you know, loved history and stuff. And, you know, um, I saw, saw this, you know, this famous painting, like you said, of George Washington in his apron and holding the lodge pipe. I'm like, huh. And, you know, I started going into it. And, you know, I wondered... If there was a lodge near me, and you know, I joined around. And like I said, I love history, and you know, when I got into it, and when I got, I started going to dinners, you know, our state communications, which you know, at my lodge, dinners are open to the public. The meeting afterwards is not, but um, I started trying to get into masonry shortly before. 2019, 20, shortly before 2019 or around that time, and then COVID struck, and so I had to basically start from over because, no, dinners are canceled to, that, to do that whole pandemic and quarantine and all that, social distancing. And then so around 2021, 2022, you know, I started going to meetings again, and, you know, I eventually got my two signers. You no, know, I already believe in a higher being and, you know, me all freeborn, all that. Mm -hmm. and so you... uh, once I got my two signers, it was voted on and thankfully they voted me in and I got initiated. And, you know, Is Freemasonry, by the way, in your family? No, I'm a first generation Mason. Same. Isn't that wonderful? Um, although my sister's father-in-law, my sister's father-in-law, so my brother-in-law's father... He's no longer, unfortunately, a Mason. He just couldn't, didn't have really the time or money to keep up with it. But um, he was a Mason. That's pretty much the closest thing I have to familial Masonic ties. It's got to start somewhere, yeah. Now, I've heard it said, you know, you'll learn a lot about yourself in Freemasonry. What did you learn about yourself as a Freemason? Um, I learned I could be very determined when I could be. Like, um, I don't think many people would, you know, keep going to meeting and meeting and meeting for like about a year and then keep our tabs on when the lodge will open due to a whole worldwide pandemic and then go to meetings for a while after that just to get two signatures to join. Exactly. What do you think it do, could do for others? Um, a lot of things, actually. Um, for me, it helped me break out of my shell. Before then, I was very introverted. And, you know... I had trouble talking to new people, and, you know, Freemasonry and Fraternalism as a whole got me, you know, to be much more talkative and open with, you know, new people, so to speak. Um, I'm always happy to see a new brother walk by. Like, if I see someone with a Masonic ring or a square and compass, I'm like, hey, and it's cool to... You know, I'm the only boy in my family. You know, I grew up with two sisters, and I've always wanted a brother. Now, you know, I have, like, millions worldwide. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, Mr. Schroeder, I appreciate your time today, and all the best to you and your lodge. Thank you. What did you think, brothers and sisters, about our new friend, Tommy Schroeder? Right? I, 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 I loved the discussion him and I had about Masonic history in the United States. There's no way around it. Uh, Freemasonry, as well as other fraternal orders, played a very large role in the early days of North American society. Let's face it. Um, as I said, Washington, George Washington didn't do a whole lot to hide his, you know, his Masonic roots. He really didn't. And I, I, I think, you know, I think it's sad today maybe that in many cases 
a lot of our leaders are forced to do that. It's somehow being seen more as a negative. Uh, you know, fraternal roots are seen as more of a negative. And I, right, I would hope that goes away very soon. Um, I, I, I hope you enjoyed uh, the series of interviews I did with my new friend Tommy Schroeder. I, you know, we may check back in on him again to see how his fraternal journey is going. I, I could keep saying I just love the fact that this uh, this young man has has really uh, is really enjoying uh, you know his journey through uh, not just masonry but other things. Uh, I, I really appreciated him being here, and uh, we'll like I keep saying we'll keep touching back, and we'll also keep touching back uh, on these different organizations. I love revisiting. Uh, the, these organizations, I really do. But that's all the time I really have today, brothers and sisters. Before I go, I want to remind you that this podcast is available on both YouTube and Spreaker. Please share, like, and subscribe when viewing Points of Light Radio on YouTube. You can follow Points of Light Radio on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash points of light radio. You can see the link to my Twitter handle as well as the link to my Spotify channel and my Points of Light radio store. You can also see the link to my PayPal, uh, my PayPal link where you can uh, make a voluntary donation to this podcast and help move it forward. Brothers and sisters, until we meet, just step into the light.